DFG Science TV. The Wave Hunters. Do Einstein's gravitational waves rock the universe? Henning and Alexander are meeting with project leader Harald Luck at the GEO 600 gravitational wave detector today to discuss exactly where their extensions are to be installed. The gravitational wave detector is based on the operating principle of a so-called interferometer. The instrument uses the wave properties of light to measure the extremely small changes in length that are caused by gravitational waves. A laser beam is divided into two single beams. They pass through the two arms of the interferometer, which are arranged perpendicular to each other and are reflected by the end mirrors. As soon as the laser beams reach the beam splitter again, they are superimposed, so that the wave trains of the two light beams from the two arms cancel each other out. If the lengths of the two arms are now positioned so that a wave peak of one wave is incident with a wave trough of the other, the two are summed, the result being that we have no light at the output. As a result, it's dark here. The GEO 600 is based on this principle of an interferometer, only everything is much larger and much more complex here. It took many scientists many years of hard work to bring us to this point. The GEO 600 is one of the most sensitive measurement instruments in the world. The key to the possible detection of gravitational waves lies in the way they influence the mesh of space-time. If a periodic gravitational wave from space reaches us, then it causes the space-time mesh to oscillate, thereby changing the distance between the mirrors. One arm becomes a little bit longer, the other somewhat shorter. A moment later, this change in length reverses. This opposing expansion and contraction of the two arms continues while the gravitational wave passes through the detector. Because the arm lengths change, the superposition radio between the troughs and peaks of the two light waves also changes. As a result, the two wave trains no longer cancel each other out. So we're using the characteristic of the interferometer that converts changes in length to changes in brightness. The light at the output of the detector now changes depending on the change in length of the two arms. If we measure this light, then we have used the interferometer to measure gravitational waves. And that is the fraction of a meter that a gravitational wave would expand or contract, and that's what we measure. We've got used to the idea, but it really is world class. But the events that transmit gravitational waves strong enough to be measured by the GEO are very seldom. For this reason, the detector, in spite of its incredible sensitivity, must be improved further in order to be able to detect even smaller or more distant events. Here, the researchers run against a fundamental law of nature. With regard to the tiny changes in brightness at the output of the detector, the researchers don't know whether such fluctuations resulting from changes in length are caused by a gravitational wave or whether quantum noise is the culprit. Learn how Henning and Alexander outsmart quantum physics in order to further improve the detector next time. Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.